Uh, hey everybody, hey Peterborough, hey surrounding areas, hey Kentucky Valley region, Monadnock. Uh It's been a, a while, it's been about 10, 11 years since I've lived here, but um, I grew up over by Newton Falls, went to Conval. Um, I've been living in the New York area in a couple of the different boroughs, Brooklyn, Harlem, was in the Bronx for a little while um, in the past 10 years. And I'm just coming back now for a little while, um, for a week to get out of the craziness that is coronavirus. And I just wanted to stress a point that I've felt to be very useful for me over the past few years um, as I've been uh, going through my white life in a predominantly black space. Um, and I guess I'm gonna start out with a very brief story, um, very brief. In 2015, uh, I went down to Ferguson to with the intention of listening to what was happening in our country, because I wasn't quite sure that what was going on in the United States was true. I didn't know, I thought I knew what side I stood on, but I knew I had to go down and listen to make sure. So I went down to Ferguson for a week. I listened, I got confirmation that I was standing on the right side of things, and that was with Black Lives Matter. And I came back and I was just, I was infuriated by the fact that this was continuing. So I partook on a form of performance uh, allyship. Um, and I took a bike ride with this flag on the back of the bike. It was a big six foot flag from Harlem to Atlanta. I wanted to meet other white folk who had similar agenda as I did and who also cared about pushing the message that black lives do matter. And there was one day on that trip where I got followed by a couple pickup trucks that we see oftentimes in this town rolling through. For me, that was kind of normal. But for me on that trip with that flag, that message, be that, that sight became much different. The meaning of that sight became much different. I became more aware of the fact that those pickup truck drivers who slowed down and tried to look at what color the flags flew, this is the flag of black liberation, by the way. So the people who slowed down to try to see what I was about scared me. A couple stopped, a couple, told, a couple told me to get out of their town. A couple made threats. And there was one day as north as Maryland that one, somebody told me that I best not let that sunset on my ass because I'm not in Harlem anymore. It started to rain a little later and I had a breakdown because I realized that I was scared. I was scared about my safety in that moment. And then I realized that I could take that flag down anytime I want and then I'm just a white dude on a bike in some small town in, in Maryland or Delaware, wherever I was. And then I became infuriated because that was the moment that I realized that black people, they can't take the skin off. They can never take that flag down. And that's what they feel every day in small towns across this country. In Peterborough, in this police department, I grew up and a lot of people might feel really comfortable. I felt comfortable. This town is cool. There's a lot of towns that are not cool. I started bawling because I was scared. And then I became militant. I felt like I had to defend myself. And that's the point in my whiteness that I realized that it was my responsibility to use the fact that I'm not always flying that flag. And if somebody else, if there's a black person in this country, it's my responsibility. It's our responsibility as I see a majority of white faces in this, in this crowd today, which I'm super happy about. But I feel like in this movement, there's a lack of specificity sometimes. And I wanna make a very specific point that if we see a black person anywhere in this country where harm is being done upon them, it is our responsibility as allies to step in and ask, at least ask what's going on. Ask the offender, ask the aggressor, hey, is everything good here? To give them a moment to breathe when they feel like they can. Because if there's a cop who has a amygdala hijack in his mind who's going either fight or flight, it might not be that serious. It might not be that serious. And if you ask, hey, is everything good? Can I, can I do anything to help? I'm just observing, and it looks like things might get out of hand here. 
That's our responsibility. And if it's already going on, it's our responsibility to put our bodies in the way of that altercation. And if we're going to sit here with our signs and say that we're complicit, we have, if we're at the edge, we've been complicit all of our white history. And right now, this is new ground. We've been stepping on this grass for a long time. This grass can resemble our white history of being complicit. But stepping in, that's new ground. We've never been here before. As a whole community, as a whole white America, as a whole white Peterborough, we've never collectively stepped from our white supremacist history into a place where we're comfortable collectively to stand in front of a police officer or some bigoted individual in between them and a black person in this country. And that's what we need to agree on every day. Every day we need to wake up and realize that that's the commitment we're making if we're gonna be out here with the signs that we fake, with, with the signs that we have. And lastly, if there's times in which you feel like you don't know how to do it or you're uncomfortable with that, I'm gonna stay here because this, this is the better spot. We gotta, we gotta stay in that discomfort. We gotta examine that because that's where our lesson is. The spots that we're not comfortable with when we conceptualize all of these things and about how we can interject, that's, that uncomfort, that discomfort, is exactly where we need to be because that's, we can figure that part out, that's how we make the next step and leave that history even further behind us. That's our physical responsibility. Thank you guys, I really appreciate it.